Everyone and welcome to our service today and also happy February January's over and for some of us I think that's pretty good news with the floods the pandemic lockdown homeschooling dry January etc I think we're ready to start seeing hopefully more spring signs of spring in the air Anyway, whether you are watching this from Norton, Moulton, the surrounding villages or even further afield uh, whether you're watching this at 10 o'clock when it premieres or whether you're watching it on catch up later on it's great to know that we can all be together virtually to worship our amazing God. So we're going to just open in prayer and I'm going to say a line and then there's a line for you and your line is Lord help us to concentrate on you. So let's pray. As we gather together, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we put aside the things that distract us, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we leave behind the things that worry us, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we forget about ourselves, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we worship you with songs of praise, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. As we listen to stories from your word, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. And as we hear your teaching, Lord, help us to concentrate on you. Amen. And we're going to begin now with a, a fantastic hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Oh, 
We've come to our time of confession and it's a time when we think about those things that maybe we did wrong or those things that we didn't do as well as we could have done or those things that we didn't do that maybe we should have done. And those things are sins and they get in the way of our relationship with God. So confession is really important so that we can hand those sins over to God and we can say sorry for what we've done wrong. So we're just going to have a few moments of silence and in that silence just reflect on your last few days, on the last week. Just have a think about those times maybe that you've got angry or you've spoken in haste or you've, you've done something that you regret. Just spend some time handing that over to God. And I lead you now in a prayer and the response is, we want to say, sorry, Lord. For all the times we've made you feel sad, we want to say, sorry, Lord. For all the times when we lie or cheat, we want to say, sorry, Lord. For all the times when we're angry and grumpy, we want to say sorry, Lord. For all the times when we're rude or naughty, we want to say sorry, Lord. For all those times when we're selfish or lazy or unkind, we want to say sorry, Lord. For all the wrong things we do, we want to say, sorry, Lord. Amen. Today's reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in the name, he, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a human's uh, or husband's will, but of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. May the Lord bless his reading. Amen. Hello, it's lovely to be able to talk to you today. We heard the reading from John's Gospel in our service today. What an amazing reading and it sums up what we are as Christians. In the passage, we hear the word light. In fact, we hear it six times. And did you know the word light is mentioned over 200 times in the Bible? It got me thinking. I'd like you to pause the video and look around the room that you're in. 
Can you find all the things that give you light or create light? How did you get on? I found lots of things in my house that create light. I found that we have lots of torches. We have 11 of these torches that go on your head. Quite why we have that many, I'm not quite sure. We also have 45 candles. That seems a bit excessive. Your challenge after the service is to make a dark den in your house and then take a torch with you like this and take it into the den with you. I wonder if you've ever played hide and seek in the dark or played a game where you have to be blindfolded and have to find your way with instructions from another person. It's very difficult and quite frustrating. These games are really fun, but they're so much easier when you have a light. I wonder what the weather's like where you are today. Have a look out of your window. Hopefully the sun's shining. But even if it's a bit grey or cloudy, the light from the sun will still be there. Unless, of course, you're watching this at night time. In which case, I presume you're using a product of the amazing invention that is electricity. Why? Because without it, you wouldn't be able to see. And it's only when we think about the sun's light particularly that we realise how important it is. The sun's light enables us to see, obviously, but it also enables the plants to grow through an incredible, awe-inspiring change called photosynthesis. The sun's light gives us heat, vitamins, it gives us the seasons, and therefore a, a huge diversity of plants and animals. The sun's also at the very centre of our solar system. Everything orbits the sun. And so without the sun's light, or any light, we wouldn't be able to exist or survive. And this is the same with Jesus. He is the centre. We hear so often in the Bible that Jesus is the light of the world. Without him, we get lost. We can't find our way. Jesus is our guide and our light in the darkness. Now, if we step back a bit and look at the whole passage that we heard today, it sounds very familiar to an, another much older part of the Bible. The passage starts with, in the beginning. That sounds familiar. It's the same as the first sentence of the book of Genesis. Indeed, the first sentence in the Bible, the creation story. And there's a reason for this. John gives us a fresh understanding of the process of creation. And lockdown has given us all a chance to admire and respect God's creation. I wonder if you've been for a walk recently and seen any snowdrops. I saw my first snowdrop a few weeks ago and I always get really excited because there's a new season coming. I don't know about you, but I really like programmes made by David Attenborough. This one is my favourite. They always amaze me and they make me think that this can't possibly have come about by chance. Take, for example, the caterpillar, a grubby, strange little creature that lives in your garden but eventually goes through an amazing process and creates a cocoon and then lies in wait for one of the most spectacular changes in nature, becoming a butterfly. How amazing! I was talking to my children about this passage and they started firing questions at me that I think even the most learned theologian in the world would struggle to answer. But one of them said something really interesting. They said, is God a bit like the inventor of the Dyson? My response was, what, the Hoover? They said, yes, because the inventor of the Dyson made 5,127 Dyson prototypes before he made the one that he was happy with. You can imagine I was thinking, how does this relate to the passage? But I persevered and continued to listen. They said, do you think God keeps making earths? And when people don't do what they want, or when things don't go to his creation plan, he flings them out into space and just makes another one. Thankfully, I knew the answer to this one. My response was no, God had a very different approach from James Dyson. He sent Jesus, his son, to forgive us and to be the light in the darkness. 
John describes him as the word full of grace and truth. And in Matthew's gospel, one of my favourite passages says, surely I am with you to the very end of the age. Jesus is our light and through him we can be forgiven and our sins and our imperfections can be forgiven and he will not leave us. However dark our lives may feel, and I know for lots of people this past year has felt really dark, we have the hope of the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi everyone, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Graham and I'm part of the worship team at St Peter's Church. I just wanted to introduce um, the song we're going to sing next, uh, which is called City on a Hill. It's brand new to us. We've never sung it in church or online before. Uh, so it's really exciting um, to have a go. Uh, it's really simple, um, lots of repetition in it. So hopefully you'll really get in the groove. But it's got some really beautiful words um, about Jesus and the amazing things he does in this world through us when you let him into your life. Lots of the stuff that Rachel has been talking about and his light will come your light and your light will be an example to those around you. So I hope you enjoy. This is City on a Hill. And now we will have a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, 
we thank you that we are gathered together remotely in your name. Please hear us as we pray to you now. At this time we pray for people who are ill with COVID or other illnesses. We pray that you will bring healing and peace to all the people in hospital or who are ill at home. We pray for all the doctors, nurses and other medical professionals. Please give them wisdom to know the right way and help them when they feel overwhelmed. Thank you for all our key workers who risk their lives to keep our country going during this hard time. We pray for the families of key workers who miss them when they are at work and who might be worried about them. We thank you for the key workers' kindness and generosity. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will give all key workers hope, joy and strength as they go to work. We pray that the government will make sensible decisions and keep key workers as safe as possible at work. Amen. Father God, we pray for people who are alone at this difficult time. Please look after them and watch over them. Help us to try our best to keep in touch with them over the phone, by letter or a kind word as we walk past. Please let them know that you're with them, a light in the darkness. Help them to know that they're loved by you. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for all the people from St. Peter's Church who have worked hard to create fun activities for us to do during lockdown. We pray for people who are lonely and don't have technology to access our online services, services and therefore are missing church a lot. Thank you for keeping us safe at home Thank you for kind neighbours and generous strangers. Help us to be more like Jesus, to be kind, helpful and loving to everyone in our community. Amen. We pray for families. God, please help families who are finding lockdown hard. We pray for grandparents who are missing seeing grandchildren. We pray for mums and dads who are homeschooling as well as working. We pray for children who are missing their friends, their schools and their clubs. Please help everyone to be kind, patient and to love each other just like you love us. And please help others who have, are suffering and fighting for their lives and who have suffered and experienced loved ones dying. Please, Lord. Help us get through this tough time. Amen. Thank you, God, for being able to video call our friends and family. Amen. Thank you for this loving world. And thank you for my loving family. Thank you, God, for being able to go on our bikes. Um, thank you, God, for the COVID vaccine and all the scientists who are working on it. Thank you for the love, care and happiness throughout my home. Thank you, God, for the beauty of your creation. Amen. Now we will say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's birthdays and notices time. Birthdays first, if it's your birthday in the last few days or you've got it coming up in the next few days, we want to wish you a very, very happy birthday from all of us at St Peter's. And just two notices today. 
So the first, I've been asked to read a notice from Rev Ben and the rest of the Gunter family, and it says, We would like to say a huge, capital letters, huge thank you to everyone for all your encouraging messages, prayers and extraordinary generosity. We are deeply touched, overwhelmed and a bit emotional about it all. We will miss you so much and don't even have a chance to say goodbye properly. So if you're passing Stokesley, please do drop in for coffee. As St Paul wrote, I thank God every time I remember you. God bless you and St Peter's, Ben, Jackie, Grace and Lizzie. And the second notice is um, about something that's coming up that you might want to get involved with in the next few days. Um, so have a look at this clip. Hi there. This third lockdown is difficult for many of us. There are lots of reasons to be sad, but also reasons to be grateful as we have seen some amazing community spirits emerge here in Moulton and Norton. How can we share some lockdown love with each other in these tough times whilst most of us are just trying to survive? How can we remind ourselves and our neighbours that they are loved? My name is Hendrik, Hendrik Klaver, and I am a Church of England minister in Moulton and Norton, starting new initiatives working with people in the community. And my name's Sarah Wright, and I'm one of the church wardens at St Peter's Norton. How amazing would it be if this February we flood our neighbourhoods with love? Why not decorate your window with hearts or words of encouragement? Hearts of any size, colour or shape. It could be as simple as a heart made out of newspaper or recycling, or you could go crazy and fill your whole window with hearts. Use whatever bits and pieces you can find in your house. Draw, paint, crochet, do whatever you like. This February is the time to share some love. And if this isn't exciting enough, there are some prizes to win as well. Please send a picture of your window to blessmolton at gmail.com before Saturday the 20th of February. And don't forget to include your name and your address. We look forward to seeing your windows of love all around Moulton and Norton. And to be in with a chance of winning a prize, don't forget to send a picture to blessmolton at gmail.com. Let's share some love, let's show some love. We're going to finish our worship together today by singing My Lighthouse, so get ready to join in the actions. But before we do that, let's just have our blessing. May the Father's hand keep us from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give us confidence to follow. And the fire of the Spirit keep us warm and safe in our walk with God this week. Amen. Hi everyone, my name is Beth and I'm going to be teaching you the actions for My Lighthouse. So to start with the chorus, you go, My Lighthouse, My Lighthouse, Shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My Lighthouse, My Lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Oh. Safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you. in my trouble see oh, you are the peace in my trouble see in the 
silence you won't let go in the questions you're true